Hi everyone, welcome back to Abra Nale channel. Today we are going to discuss about IATF 16949, International Automotive Task Force, the automotive standard which we have. The version is 2016 version. And in the previous video, we talked about the briefing about what is IATF standard and what are the core tool, the five core tool we discussed. Briefly, we touched and went on those five core tools. Uh, this video will be talking about one of the fifth tool of uh, automotive core tool, right? There are five core tool. You all know that, namely APQP, Advanced Product Quality Plan. Number two, Production Part Approval Process, that is called PPAP. The third one is FMEA, Failure Mode Effect Analysis. Fourth one is SPC, Statistic process control the last one is the MSA so in these discussions in this video we're going to talk about the MSA wonderful topic and uh, the throughout the uh, statistic throughout the whether e, even if you to put this into DMAC approach define measure analyze improve and control or in general uh, whether you talk about the SPC or MSA the basic thing is data is important, right? So, depend upon the classification of data, the tool will vary. What do you mean by that? For example, if your data is variable data, you all know variable data meaning like the data which is measurable, the data in also called continuous data, that is called variable data. If you have a variable data, you need to use GRR, gauge, repeatability and reproducibility. On the other side, if you have a data which is discrete data or the data which is attribute data or which you can count or classify, then you can use attribute agreement analysis from the MSA. So MSA has got two major branches. One, if your data is happens to be the variable data, then you can use GRR. If your data is happens to be a discrete data then you can use attribute agreement analysis let's talk a little bit more snippets of uh, grr grr the heart of the grr is ndc ndc you all know number of distinct categories and if the number of distinct categories if the result is the summary of everything that number gives you every story of it right if the NDC value is 5, that means good. That means the variability is less than 10% uh, both. There are two perspectives. One, you have a number like 5. We can approve that one. 5 and greater than 5, you can approve that one. Meaning, that means the variability is less. What do you mean by variability? So, the name itself is repeatability and reproducibility. Repeatability is to do with the number of times we are repeating it, right? Reproducibility is with the number of appraiser, different appraiser, like A, B, C person and all that, right? So, repeatability and reproducibility, with these two junction, with these two combination, and if the value is, if the NDC value is 5, that means the variability must be lower in any of, I mean, both of the things, either repeatability and reproducibility will have the low variation. That's what it signifies. On the other side, 3 and 4, meaning the, the variability can happen in the range of 11 all the way to 30. But these 3 to 4, if the value, if you are getting like 3 to 4, you need to conditionally approve. There are two things you can do. One, first, you need to check what's your organization document it talks about it and if it is something says that clearly says that you need to reject we need to reject or in some cases you know you can conditionally approve with the help of quality team with the help of management with the help of uh, some concession can be raised or deviation can be raised then you can do it so three and four especially you need to look out which process we are talking about if it is safety it can violate the regulation and uh, statutory requirement then we cannot approve and it depend upon the situation you can conditionally approve if you get the value is 3 and 4 
okay what is the what is the nuances is you get it so you if you get the value of 3 and 4 there is a strong indication that either your repeatability greater than 10 percentage or reproducibility is greater than percentage or two can be greater than 10 percentage right the last and final one is if you are getting the ndc value one and two that means the value suggests that the variations are very more we have to reject it right we have to make sure that we need to do uh, redo it or we need to define that where the causes are there where the variation are there we need to arrest it these are all the things about grr there are few silent point which i wanted to keep uh, before you number one while doing that grr we must take random we should not take the value extremely good artificially make the point which is you know which is on the mean value or the mu value and all that we should not do you should take the value randomly how do you can check it that's the reason whenever you take the part whenever you take any material so you always you need to trace back with the serial number right so that we can get to know whether it should not be let's say you have a simple example let's say I have 100 laptops yeah I'm whole product I'm measuring it 100 laptops I have and what I have to do let's say I'm doing it 10 percentage of that group right 10 percentage is 100 of 10 percentage is 10 you will get it so the 10 has to be like one randomly you need to check like 25 fifth value will take 50th value I will take and 75th value will take and then in a combination I will cover uh, 10 samples okay I think we should cover more than 25 but just an example and if you happen to be like first 10 alone you have taken that is not good last 10 alone you have taken that is also not good sampling or you have taken the value which has been very beautiful and no skewness is there no uh, you know the outlayer is there only that that is also not recommended you have to take random randomization is very very important in GRR as such that is one there are other two things which I wanted to talk about it so when you get this in the mini tab it is very easy to perform the calculation you need to go to stat and then from the stat quality tools and gauge RNR and the cross method cross method has been widely used you can do that mini tab does not give any decimal value it all it gives is only either one two three four five or greater than five it does not give 1.1 2.2 and all that no right so if you do it in the excel i think you might get the decimal value but many tab does not give that a uh, decimal value but doing in many tab will save lot of time and it is more efficient and faster let's go back to the next tool called attribute agreement analysis attribute agreement analysis this gr has been mainly used for the machines and operator an appraiser when you have a two, co two combination this is perfectly good an attribute agreement analysis can be used for anything training reassessment and wanted to know that effectiveness of the trainings and all that attribute agreement analysis can be used so what attribute analysis does is first it find out that whether the person is consistent in the decision or not wherever you have a uh, in an issue uh, whether the decision has been accurate or not whenever there is a you know, accuracy issues are happening whenever there is an error are happening that is due to awareness issue and all that attribute agreement analysis is a powerful tool let's talk about what so grr gives ndc attribute agreement analysis gives kappa value right if the kappa value is, you can get it like you know plus one and minus one zero to plus one and minus one if the value is for example 0.8 right there are two things comes in within the appraiser that means you are comparing within the peers and with the master you are comparing with the standard with the master with the manager with the supervisor and all that right if the value is 0.6 right that means 60 percentage is accurate 40 percentage we are not taking the right decision or the decision either conflicting are not supporting the master that is uh, the supervisor or manager one so we need to make sure that the value almost we should get 0.8 you get a beautiful trend in the uh, mini tab 
so it gives like 80 if it is 80 then you can approve it uh, and if it is not uh, 80 then reassessment re-evaluation why that training what is the gap is there all to do with the trainings and all that will take place in the uh, attribute agreement analysis and once again attribute agreement analysis how to do in many time very simple I have covered in both the topics I have got more than four videos how to do it in many tab uh, and all that so in this case you, you need to go to stat uh, in the mini tab you need to go to stat quality tools attribute agreement analysis and then you pick up that you know all the multiple how many trials you are doing it how many appraiser you are doing it and then you who is your master and all that and then it gives you in fraction of second it gives you complete one if your copper value is uh, you know 0.8 then it is good if it is less than that you need to really really work on it so also it gives like confidence level like what is the level it, it will get it like the whisker point the confidence level and also it gives the mean value everything it, it gives it so that sum up the entire MSA MSA is a big topic very ocean and what I covered is the gist of uh, the MSA MSA has got two things one is called GRR one is called attribute agreement analysis GRR the output of the GRR is NDC the output of attribute agreement analysis is kappa value and depend upon the value you can look for it and both the cases uh, when you're doing a GRR we have to be random you have to be very careful and the same thing uh, the second thing is uh, when the appraiser is doing it we should hide that we should make the identification we should not expose the value and we should not give the identification otherwise the bias will happen and all that and then attribute agreement analysis yet another tool uh, where we have to you know add hide that uh, the traceability everything and then the, so that the person comes and take the assessment different time so that we can see that whether the person is able to take the right decision every time or not so these are the tool which i wanted to cover as a automotive core tool one of the core tool which i cover the next video will be coming up on spc statistic process control please do like share subscribe my channel you have wonderful day ahead